here's a question for you. Kamala Harris is surging in the polls. What's her policy positions? So I'm gonna start talking about the issues that I think in my own small little way are important issues. Wanna know what matters to like me and my neighbors? We can't afford groceries. The border is porous. It looks like we're inching closer to getting involved in a serious war every day. We have a president right now that's nowhere to be seen, who's not mentally competent enough to run for president. We have the leading candidate at this point, based on polling, that's going to be the next president that didn't win one primary vote, that hasn't given any fucking policy positions, that since she's been announced as the Democrat candidate, hasn't given one press conference, hasn't given one pre-scripted commentary where she could be challenged, despite the fact that we're being told by her campaign, all of the positions she ran on in 2020, trust us, she doesn't, she doesn't believe them now. Actually, she's no longer for open border. She's not for banning fracking. She changed her mind in all of it. And no one's holding her accountable. And it's actually more of a threat than just Kamala winning. Remember when I told you after the Biden-Trump debate that the most important thing to take away from that debate was the fact that almost every major institution in this country had blatantly lied to you about Joe Biden's mental health for years? They didn't give a fuck. They don't give it. They talk about terms like democracy. Democracy means actually, it's not just one person, one vote. The spirit of democracy is that the will of the people should be followed by their government. Intentionally lying to the people so that they choose politicians that won't benefit them or are incapable of benefiting them isn't democracy. Blatantly lying about Joe Biden's mental health decline and then being forced to say, uh-oh, he has a mental health decline, only to force him out so they could get another candidate in there that they think they could gaslight the American people about to have a better chance of beating Trump isn't democracy. And if you go back to 2020, the 2020 election, what I said was I had no problem with people and I think there are significant questions talking about legitimate fraud that could have occurred during the 2020 election. However, I didn't see definitive proof. It wasn't my cup of tea. I didn't talk about it a lot. I said, my concern is what if there wasn't significant fraud? What if we were able to have through manipulation of algorithms, through places like social media, collaboration with the mainstream media, entertainment industry, academia, intel agencies, etc., that a bunch of bureaucrats and powerful people could basically just select who our leaders will be in perpetuity. That's far scarier. Because if they could drag a bumbling, doddering, or doddering old man like Joe Biden, who basically didn't campaign for the last three months of 2020, if they could drag him across the finish line, then who couldn't they? And now we're seeing in real time the power they have with Kamala Harris. She hasn't done anything. She went from being one of the most unpopular vice presidents ever polled to all of a sudden she's surging in popularity. And for what? Well, because we're being astroturfed to believe it. That's it. What's her policy positions? No one knows. Okay, well then how about, it? here's the ridiculous nature. Okay, so what's Kamala Harris's policy positions? Well, she doesn't have them on her website, unless they went up today. She hasn't really talked about any of them, except she just took I, Trump's idea of tips, no tax on tips. Basically, she just says like, well, day one, I'm gonna lower prices. How? What does that mean? And aren't you there now? Day one, I'm gonna secure the border. But you're vice president now. Why aren't you doing something? What does that mean? What is your policy? What, what exactly are you going to do? So if she hasn't talked about her policy positions, okay, where would we go? Well, it seems like the reasonable thing to do would say, okay, well, what's policy position she's endorsed historically? Or how about, how about this? Let's start with this. Okay, she's the vice president now to a president that's basically MIA. So surely she must endorse the policies of the current administration. Now... No, not necessarily. Okay, then I guess she'll go with the policy position she ran on when she ran in 2020. No. Really? No, no, no. Okay, so she's not announcing her policy positions. She's not running on, I'm going to do the same stuff that I'm doing now as vice president. She's not running on the policy position she had in 2020. Okay, maybe we should look at 
her VP pick and maybe the policy positions he had. That's what she's going to be. That's kind of a record that's who she picked. No, not necessarily. But she's a brat. Okay. And she's going to win. She, everybody understands that, right? I know that I had a very unpopular position amongst fans of my channel when I was saying, even when the assassination of Trump happened of Trump, yeah, I still put him at best a 10% chance to win. And I had people going, that's absurd. The election's over. It's over, man. Trump's clearly going to win. Biden's not even there and blah, blah, blah. I've been saying for years, Biden's not going to be the nominee in 2024. That's nuts. I, lefties were telling me that. That's crazy. That's insane. That's nuts. Okay? Now look where we're at. 